Hi, I'm David Boswell, and I'm going to explain the chain fountain with concepts that you can find in any high school physics book. Here's my professional looking title slide of the analysis. There's been a lot of discussion around what causes the chain fountain. Biggins and Warner proposed the container pushing up on the chain, creating the fountain. Hiroshi Yokoyama of Kent State University demonstrated that a container is not required for the chain fountain to form. Hiroshi calls this configuration the crown fountain. It does not have support for the chain for the kickback effect. We can represent the free body diagram of the chain with a drawing like this. The chain goes upwards a distance h, curves around a radius r, descends back to the level of the container distance h, and then continues downwards large h. Let's look at the curve that the chain makes. It has a radius r. The chain in the curve experiences centrifugal forces. Centrifugal forces are considered an inertial or fictitious force. The important part here is that the chain needs to constrain an outward force. The force itself is going to equal mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. Biggins and Warner assumed the downward vertical force from the chain itself was equal to this centrifugal force. Biggins and Warner continued to assume that you could use the small angle theorem to approximate the tension in the chain itself. But as you can see, the outward centrifugal force is not at a small angle. Using trigonometry, we get a tension force in the chain in the curve like this. As you'll see later, having an equation like this will be useful in calculating the force that creates the chain fountain. Going back to the original vector diagram of the curve with the red arrows, you can see we can break it up into vertical and horizontal forces. The horizontal forces shown here, you can see cancel out, balancing it. However, if we look at the vertical forces, there isn't anything else balancing it out in this curve itself. Looking at the container and the rest of the chain, I've computed the forces as shown here. The item of contention is what kind of force does the container contribute to the chain fountain? That is the root of all the discussion. Since we're interested in the height of the fountain, we can look at the forces in the vertical direction. We come up with an equation like this. If the first two terms on the right side of this equation calculate a height that is lower than experiment, the mold effect adds to the fountain height. Let's compare it to experiment by Yokoyama. The equation predicted a fountain height of at least 0.28 meters. Experiment showed 0.16 meters. Unfortunately, the mold effect does not create the fountain. Does the mold effect exist? I think it does, and I think it's wicked interesting. As you can see in many of the videos, the ball chain seems to snake around and hover above the rest of the pile. What I see is an efficient and low friction momentum transfer. So the mold effect itself is probably the catalyst for the fountain being created to begin with. Another cool thing that I'm seeing in all the discussions and the model of the mold effect is that the chain is behaving like a skateboard ollie. I invite you to check out the physics of the skateboard ollie and also if you got a skateboard, try it yourself. It's really cool to pull off. For all the hypotheses around the standing waves observed in the chain fountain, I invite you to investigate spherical waves and the Fourier transform. But that is beyond this presentation. Thank you. Apologies for those who deserve credit, who are not getting it, and apologies who are offended by this content. That's it for now. If you found this video entertaining, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.